Hello, welcome back to our video series of building recommendation systems with TensorFlow. My name is Wei, and I'm a developer advocate at Google. In our last video, we showed you how to build a basic ranking model using TensorFlow recommenders. Now you know how to build a retrieval and ranking system. But to make sure your recommender is effective, you need to do more to improve the accuracy of your models. So in this video, we'll be discussing how to leverage context features and how to do multitask learning with TensorFlow recommenders. To improve our model accuracy, one of the things we can do is to leverage context features, or sometimes called side features. Our previous experience of using TensorFlow recommenders has not incorporated context features. We have relied purely on user and item IDs, but if you know anything about feature engineering, you must understand that context features are very important and can influence your model accuracy quite a bit. For example, day of the week may be an important feature when deciding whether to recommend a short clip or a movie. Users may only have time to watch short content during the week, but can relax and enjoy a full-length movie during the weekend. Similarly, query timestamps may play an important role in modeling popularity dynamics. One movie may be highly popular around the time of the release, but decay quickly afterwards. Conversely, other movies may be evergreens that are happily watched time and time again. In addition, many recommendation datasets is sparse when very few observations are available for a given user or item, the model may struggle with finding a good representation for it. This is particularly relevant with cold start problem, in which you have fresh items or users coming in with no prior interaction with the system. So it's critical to leverage context features to tackle cold start problem. So in our case, we'll include two user context features timestamp and normalize the timestamp, and one movie context feature, movie title text in our model. If you have done any feature engineering before, it will look very similar. I also encourage you to include more context features in your own experiments to see how additional features affect your model performance. We are going to use a retrieval model to demo how to do this. First. For the user model, we create a user model and set up the user ID embedding. This is pretty straightforward by now. Next, we use discretization pre-processing layer to bucketize timestamps and use normalization pre-processing layer to normalize timestamps. Now we can concatenate user ID embedding, timestamp embedding, and normalize the timestamp embedding into a single vector. This will be the input for the query tower. Moving over to movie model, we first start with the movie title embedding. Then we use text vectorization preprocessing layer together with embedding and the global average pooling layers to map the movie title text to an embedding. We then concatenate two embeddings into a vector as a movie item representation. This is similar to what we did for the user features. Now we can define a movie lens model. In the init method, we add one more dense layer on top of the user model as our query model. Similarly, we add one more dense layer on top of the movie model as our candidate model. Now we define the retrieval task as we did before. Lastly, we define the loss. Overall, the workflow is pretty much the same as before. We only added additional context features into the two towers, and it should improve our model performance. I'm going to skip the performance benchmark part, since we have that in our documentation. Feel free to check it out. Our next topic is multitask recommenders. Multitask learning is not a new idea. Back in 1997, Rich Caruana published a widely cited paper on multitask learning. The idea is to solve multiple machine learning tasks at the same time, while exploiting commonalities and differences across tasks. This makes sense because in many real-world applications, there are multiple sources of feedback to draw upon. For example, on YouTube, 
Users can provide a variety of different signals. Users may watch some videos but skip others, which provides implicit feedback. They may sum up or down on the videos, add their comments on the videos, and even share the videos to a social network like Twitter. Integrating all these different forms of feedback is critical to building systems that users love to use and avoiding optimizing a single metric at the expense of overall performance. In addition, building a joint model for multiple tasks may produce better results than building a number of task-specific models. This is especially true when some data is abundant, for example, clicks, and some data is sparse, for example, comments or sharing. In those scenarios, a joint model may be able to use representations learned from the abundant task to improve its predictions over the sparse task via transfer learning. Now you understand why we want to use multitask learning in a recommender system. Let's build one that includes a retrieval task and a ranking task using both implicit and explicit feedback. We first define a ranking task that leverages explicit feedback, which is the movie ratings from MovieLens datasets. Next, we define a retrieval task using the implicit feedback of movie watches. The user model and movie model are defined as before, so we won't elaborate them here. The rating model is three dense layers stacked together as before. We apply the rating model to the concatenation of user embeddings and movie embeddings. Lastly, we compute the rating loss and retrieval loss separately, and then combine them by their respective weights. These weights are hyperparameters that you need to tune to satisfy your own needs. That's all. We can now call the standard Keras compile method and feed method to train our multitask recommender assuming we have done the data preprocessing as well. As you can see here, it's actually fairly easy to build a multitask model within the framework of TensorFlow recommenders. Just to summarize, today we discussed how to leverage context features and multitask learning to improve your model accuracy. I have put together some links for you to check out in case you want to learn more about them. In the next video, we'll be showing you deep and cross network. See you next time.